Screech by Taron MCT Read by Oakshadow 5 Chapter 18 Izuku practically danced out into the kitchen on Monday morning, one of the largest smells on his face Hizashi had ever seen, eyes twinkling in delight. Good morning, Papa! Izuku exclaimed, giving Hizashi a big hug. Giggling, Hizashi replied, And a very good morning to you as well, my baby owl. I take it it's a good day. Izuku nodded his head and extended his wings, full of fresh, glossy feathers. I'm finally done molting, and look, I got an extra seven inches. Izuku ran his fingers down his primary flight feathers. They changed color slightly too, and probably only a few months away from having a full set of adult feathers. I'm happy for you, baby. Hisashi hugged his baby bird tightly as Hitoshi shuffled into the kitchen. Morning, Zoo. Hitoshi yawned, flopping into a chair at the kitchen. Toshi, look, look, my wings have more white in them now. Izuku shoved one of his wings right in Hitoshi's face, while grinning like a loon. I was hoping they'd be bigger, but I didn't think they'd be whiter. I've almost grown out of all my baby feathers. Hitoshi had just barely managed to keep his eyes open long enough to see Izuku's wings when Izuku hopped away most likely looking for Shota, so he could keep showing off his wings. Where did my shy, quiet brother go? Hitoshi mumbled. No one gave him permission to be such a morning person. Hisashi laughed and placed a mug of coffee in front of Hitoshi, and then ruffled his hair. Shota! 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 Dad! Dad! Look! 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 Are many feathers so pretty? Izuku jumped on the bed where Shota was still attempting to wake himself up. Come on, you're not looking! He whined and started shaking Shota awake. Oh god, no, there's two of them. Shota grumbled, wondering who he pissed off to give him a son that was every bit as hyper as his husband was. Just look at my new pretty feathers and I leave you alone. Izuku tried to compromise. Fine. Shota mumbled and opened his eyes. They're very nice, Izu. Now, go away. Hmph, you're no fun. Izuku poked Shota one more time before getting up and going back to the kitchen. Papa, that's a grouch. Izuku complained with his cheeks puffed out. With another laugh, Hisashi said, You're just now realizing this. Okay, who are you and what did you do with my brother? Hitoshi asked, ending himself a laugh from Izuku. I can fly again? Izuku bounced up and down a few times. I'm going to fly to school today. I got my flight permit a few days before I started molting, but I'm going to use it today. He turned to Hisashi. Can I fly to school today? Please? How could I say no to that cute little face? Hisashi pinched Izuku's cheeks. Just make sure you're not late to class, or Shota will never let you hear the end of it. Izuku nodded and then bounced to his room to get dressed in his school uniform. I hope his energy remains all day, Hisashi said wistfully. A few minutes later, Izuku darted out of his bedroom and got his shoes before going to the patio and setting the door open. Once he got his shoes on and his backpack put on across his front, Izuku climbed onto the railing and jumped, spreading his wings and cheering as he flew off. Hisashi couldn't keep laughing. Toshi, do you mind bringing Izu his breakfast when you get to class? He was too excited to eat. Hitoshi waved a hand as he took a sip of his coffee. Izuku couldn't stop a grin if he tried. The wind in his new feathers felt so clean and refreshing. The pure joy of soaring through the skies was intoxicating. And at this time of day, there were no heroes on duty that could encroach upon his claim on the sky. It was all his. Izuku took a deep breath of sky and the few barrel rolls were still flying in the general direction of UA. He could see the school from up here, and he knew he should be making his descent into the school now, but he was just so happy to finally be in the air again. He started to make lazy circles around the building, not quite wanting to come down, but knowing he shouldn't roam too far from the school. Glancing at his phone, he saw he only had about 10 minutes before class started, so he decided it was time to land. He tucked his wings in close and went for a steep dive, going faster and faster, wishing he had a speedometer on him wondering if he could reach the elusive 240 km per hour he'd been trying for. Right at the last moment, he snapped his wings open, turning his descent into a glide, and then a full halt with a few flaps of his wings, and dropped the last 10 feet to the ground, and never once did he lose his grin. Holy shit, that was sexy! A voice called out from behind him. Izuku turned around quickly. He hadn't noticed there was anyone there when he was diving, but now he saw that Kaminari had been really close to where Izuku had landed. Oh, uh, hi... Sorry, I didn't notice you there. Nah, man, you're good. I'm so glad I got to see that. That was hot. Kaminari smirked at him and winked. You're feeling better now, I take it? Uh, yeah, my mold finished up during the night, and now I can fly again. Izuku got that manic grin on his eyes again and hopped over to Kaminari's side. Look how pretty my new feathers are. 
They are soft and glossy, and I got another 7 inches to my wingspan. And some of my darker feathers have lightened up, I only have a few baby feathers left, and I'm probably just 2 or 3 months away from a full set of adult feathers. Izuku was bouncing along beside Kaminari as he was showing off his feathers. They are really pretty, Kaminari said, laughing. He'd never seen Izuku this happy before, and he couldn't help thinking that he was so cute like this. Is it okay if I touch them? Izuku nodded, and Kaminari gently started running his fingers through Izuku's feathers. Whoa, they are super soft. Yup, our feathers have to be super soft, otherwise we wouldn't be anywhere near as silent and flat as we are. Oh, there are so many owl facts I could tell you. Yeah? How about we go to a cafe or something after school and you can tell me all about them? Kaminari suggested with a grin. Make it a date? Kaminari saw the exact moment Izuku blue screened. Uh, are you really asking me out? Like, on a real date? Yup, that's what I said. How about it? Just one date, we can talk about our facts, and if we both don't want another date, then we can just be friends, but if we do, we can go from there. Kaminari gently stroked Izuku's feathers again. I've been trying to flirt with you since the first week of school, but I guess you haven't noticed? Izuku's mouth was gaping as he just blinked at Kaminari repeatedly. I, uh, no, I didn't notice, he blushed. But if you're sure you really want to, sure. There's a cafe Hitoshi and I usually go to, it's pretty close. Kaminari smiled widely. I'd love to go there. They could see Shota walking down the hall. Oh, we need to get inside before Sensei kills us. The two boys started into the classroom with only 30 seconds to spare. As soon as Shota flopped over in a sleeping bag and let Midnight take over on helping the kids decide on their hero names, Izuku turned Hitoshi's chair around and gave him a look of desperation. Toshi! He hissed. I think I have a day today after school. Oh? Hitoshi drawled. Slight smirk gracing his lips. Did Kaminari finally man up and ask you out? Izuku squawked in indignation. How did you know? Hitoshi laughed as Shoto pulled his chair next to them. Did I hear correctly? You have a date with Kaminari after school? Izuku nodded at him with a bright blush. I was gushing to him about my new feathers, and I may have let out an owl fact. When I told him I know a lot more, he suggested going to a cafe after school to hear more, and before I could say yes or no, he suggested it be a date. Izuku covered his face with both hands. Then he said he's been flirting with me since the first week of school. Yeah, Shoto said. He hasn't been very subtle about it either. Very obvious. Hitoshi agreed. Izuku just squeaked. You both knew and didn't say anything? Hitoshi raised an eyebrow. We tried. He had just as dense as a brick wall and never took the hints. Which cafe are you going to? Shoto asked. I suggested the Owl Cafe. Izuku muttered. Do you think that was a bad idea? I didn't tell him the name of the place, so we can still change it. No, that cafe is super cute, and you're always so adorable when you have a bunch of owls printing your hair. Hitoshi smirked. He's going to fall hard for you after that. I hope you're ready. Toshi! Izuku whined, once again covering his face as the other two laughed. Midnight walked over to the three. Well, it doesn't look like you're talking about your hero names, boys. I hope you are ready to present your names. All three nodded and showed her the whiteboards that had their names on them. Names they had long since chosen. Very well, step up and present. Medaria, you can go first. Izuku nodded and got up in front of the class. So, the name I'm going to use is the same one I used for my vigilante name. I'm going to be the owl hero, Screech, he said with a smile. Approved! Thank you, Medaria. Shinzo, you're up next. Hitoshi sauntered up to the podium. I'm going to use the hypnotizing hero, Hypnos. Ooh, I like it! Approved! Todoroki, your turn! The contrasting hero, Duality. Shoto said simply, Wow, you boys are three for three! Let's see if the rest of the class can keep up with this momentum! Who's next? Once everyone had chosen their hero names, Shota handed out the stacks of internship offers. Oh, Midoriya, you didn't get any offers at all? Sarah asked, turning to him. Izuku shrugged. Well, I didn't need any. I pretty much have to do my internship with Sh Aizawa sensei Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about that vigilante thing you did, he said. You don't act at all like what I picture a vigilante would. Thanks, I guess. Izuku tilted his head. Oh, I actually have suggestions for a few people. Excuse me. Izuku got up and headed over to Tokoyami. Hello, Midoriya. Is there something I can help you with? He asked. Uh, no, but I was told to relay a message to you. Izuku blushed. Hawk said he was going to send you an internship request and he wanted me to make sure you knew he really wanted to have you as an intern. Tokiyami's eyes widened in surprise. Hawks? The number three hero? 
Tokiyami looked back to his list of offers and found Hawk's name there. What a mad banquet of darkness, he said softly. Yeah, so you don't have to pick him if you don't want to, and I'm like 97% sure he only put in the offer because they have a bad head, but he is a really good hero, and you would learn a lot from him. You just have to be patient with him. He can be a lot to deal with. You speak as though you know him. Togiyami hatched. Oh, yeah, we go flank together a few times a week, text constantly, and get fried chicken together a lot. He's practically my other brother at this point. Izuku grinned. K- I mean, Hawks is one of my favorite people, not to mention my personal and my three favorite hero. Tokiyami nodded seriously. I shall take that into consideration. Thank you. Izuku nodded back at him and then turned his attention to Kaminari. Hey, Kaminari. Izuku smiled softly. Can I see your list of offers? Sure thing. Kaminari handed over a stack of offers and Izuku flipped through them, hoping for a specific name. When he saw the name he was looking for, his eyes lit up. Oh, you have to pick present, Mike. Kaminari, I'm serious. You need to pick him. Kaminari looked at him skeptically. I mean, yeah, Mike's pretty cool, but you have such different quirks and styles. Are you sure? Izuku nodded frantically. Yes, present Mike's quirk is super versatile and really powerful. He's had a lot of practice getting his voice to a level to where it won't hurt himself or others, and he'd be the best choice for you to get more control over your electricity. And even though the more noticeable application of his quirk are long range, Mike is an amazing close combat fighter. There aren't many people who can spar against Eraser on equal footing, but Mike is one of them. I promise you, you won't regret going with Mike. Well, with an endorsement like that, how could I say no? Present Mike it is. Yay! Izuku hugged Kaminari and then quickly darted back to Itoshi before he even realized what he'd done. As soon as he did, though, he practically melted in a puddle of embarrassment. Yes! Kaminari and Izuku are going on a date at the Owl Cafe! That's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so cute! But anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed Chapter 18 of Screech, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!